is a product designed to replace um, microstrip and drop-in circulators in phased array antennas. This product now allows them to do that in a tape and reel auto pick and place, just like you would a resistor or a capacitor. Right, right. And so it gets rid of the cost of having to, oh, that's nice. to do that specialty in installation. We, we're targeting radar, uh, radar bands, right? So airborne? Airborne ground or ground, okay. Uh, we started off with a particular radar band that's kind of narrow band, but we're, we're, we're building some broader band broader versions. Band. So it's well, getting good. actually some good traction in our customer base that are typical radar candidates that you would know building phase array yeah. product. Any particular challenge? In was it more of a packaging challenge? It's a packaging or? challenge. Yeah, yeah the, the, the actual the, uh, electromagnetic simulation wasn't all that difficult. We used okay. HFSS for that. Okay. It, the packaging, to get it in that yeah. small package, and actually it came down to um, choosing the right epoxies that can survive reflow temperatures. It's got a ground signal ground yeah. interface that is a okay. better impedance matching yeah. for circuits, okay? Because we have this fully modeled, we can actually customize that interface to the to the customer's impedance that mm -hmm. the load and source impedance that this is seeing in their board. Right. By just by just doing some impedance matching on the inside. Yeah. They're not worried about the reflections from this. No, it's say. got good VSWR. Okay. It matches well to the circuit, so it's not a contributor to right. mismatch. Cool. Sometimes it's hard to get them to do it. Yeah, well, what we did is we, we went out with sample kits up okay. to about six customers in the last two months. Yeah. And we sent them a, a test board kit that looks like this. Oh, yeah. And we sent them like two individual samples. Yeah. And so they could quickly do their own EM simulations or do uh, load pull testing to see how this thing okay. reacts under impedance. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. just to sales at track.com. So yeah. we're going to do a wider band, X band version. Yeah. And then the next one we're doing is an S band version. It's about twice the size. And then probably by the end of the year, a KU band. It's exciting for us because, you know, we're, we're kind of a, a, a multifunction module yep. subsystem. Yep. But we still do have this ferrite expertise, and this is something new. Yeah. Nobody really has a true surface mount. Ferrite junction. Ferrite, yeah. There's some kind of quasi surface mm -hmm. mounts out there where they've taken a, a microstrip part and did a wrap around ground plane, oh. right, using yeah. the same ferrite right. substrate. Right. So they call it surface mount. Yeah, but it's But this is truly a yeah. real surface mount part. Yeah. I think right now the, the driving factor is trying to get the cost of phase arrays down. We have a very strong microstrip capability and we're connected to a lot of radars. And so the voice of the customer saying, we need to get the cost of this down, a lot of them replace ferrites with a switch. They can buy a $10 and $8 switch, but it doesn't have as good yeah. insertion loss and, and, and uh, isolation. And sometimes the switches only handle maybe a watt, right. two watts, yeah, right? Want Somebody wants power. to increase the power of their radar, and they want to use the same amount of junctions. Mm -hmm. They want to go to five, six, seven watts. Mm -hmm. The switch starts to peter out. Right. That's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. We built our own quote-unquote supercomputer at track. So it took modeling time simulations like from two days down to like an hour. So when a when a when a engineer loads in all the model parameters on the and the computer has to chunk on it, sometimes it would take a couple days. Mm. And now we've got a seven CPU supercomputer, What's Thor. It Thor, right? Yeah, yeah. called Thor. <laughs> and uh, we can get through uh, simulations and iterations much faster. We're doing things like um, multifunction ferrite-based assemblies where you have an isolator, a filter, an RF detector, all uh, cascaded in a single multifunction device. Mm -hmm. And now we can, instead of having to machine special cavities, we can just lay this down on a Rogers softboard. You know, we don't have to have all the specialty machining and stack up a ferrite. Right. Literally becomes just a part we put on board. One of the things that's so um, so interesting about this industry is the the specialization. You know, you look at every company. I mean, obviously you have some competition, and people are trying to do the same thing and take market share. But you know, over the course of the industry, you have this tremendous specialization, and then you you come talk to somebody like right, you, right. who clearly is passionate about what they're doing clearly has deep knowledge about not only the technology but how it's applied. Right? Well, you come, come to my house, we'll have a bottle of wine and sit on the porch <laughs> and talk about RF.